Tesla owners in Connecticut. Uh, I've had my Tesla since 2018. I just picked up this Ionic 5 because I wanted something a little bit bigger, more hatchback-y, SUV-like. Um, and so far I'm happy with it. I've had it for a week, but um, so far I'm happy with it. Definitely very different from the Tesla, um, but I'm glad to see automakers like Hyundai uh, uh, coming to terms that they need to uh, grasp the EV movement and creating a quality uh, uh, EV. So what Tesla do you have? So I have the Model 3 um, long range. Uh, when I got it, I had the Enhanced Autopilot package. Since then, I've bought the Acceleration Boost package and the FSD package. I didn't even know there was an <laughs> Acceleration yeah. package. Yep, yeah. So, so what, what did that bring it from? The Acceleration <clears throat> Boost package, I think it brought it from 4.2 seconds to 3.9. I could be like slightly off my oh, numbers, wow. but it's, it's, it brings it a, a point few seconds down uh, in the 0 to 60. Interesting. How much did they charge for that? $2,000. Which, like, it sounds so minor for $2,000, but you get used to, like, the, um, the the acceleration in the Tesla, and that, like, bump, like, makes it feel new again. Gotcha. So let's just take a walk around in the car, and what do you like about the uh, Hyundai versus the Tesla? What do you like on the Tesla versus the Hyundai? Yeah, yeah. So um, the first thing that I've noticed, and I haven't had the car heck of a lot, but... Um, built in which you wouldn't think is a problem it's just like this you know it pops out but the problem with the Tesla is ice builds up on it and because it's not motorized like this um, the car won't um, you know you, you have to break through that ice whereas this the car does it for you the other thing is like this doesn't have um, frameless windows on the Tesla it has frameless windows meaning that the window has to go down slightly for the car to open up whereas on this um, you know the, the the trim is built in so it's not have to break, you know, break ice on the, the window or whatnot to, to get the door open. The Ionic definitely is better suited in in the winter compared with the Model Three or Model Y. Have you ever been locked out because of the ice buildup? I wouldn't say locked out. I've been delayed from being able to get in the car for ten minutes because I'm just like chipping ice away um, from the Tesla. And I, I'll, I'll share a picture with you um, of, of what I'm talking about, so, so it makes more sense. Yeah, that doesn't sound fun. Yeah. Other than that, uh, I, I really like the styling of this better. I mean, this is a really good looking vehicle. Not that Tesla's aren't, um, you know, uh, Tesla's are decent looking vehicles too, but to me, I like the styling of this better. And what's this color? Uh, this is the digital teal color. Um, uh, it's like bluish, greenish. I even saw it, you know, I had this uh, parking garage. It was even a little bit purple um, at, at times. Sometimes it's a little bit gray. Very interesting color. Tesla has a few standard colors, but I really, again, I really love the styling on this. Um, trunk space uh, compared with like the Model Y is, um, uh, the Model Y, you, you do get more trunk space, but what's interesting about this is this is um, flat. So when, when you're taking things in and out, it's very easy to, to move heavy, large objects in and out. Whereas in the Tesla, it goes down a little bit. Um, so that's, I, I guess that's a pro and a con, you know? Right. You can fit more in the Model Y, but it's, you know, it might be harder if it's if it's a larger object. Sure. Um, the other thing that's different is the front in this. So the front is pretty uh, puny when compared with the Model 3 or the Model Y. Um, and I'll open it up and show you. Um, it's, uh, you know, the, the Tesla, you, you can tell they've uh, maximized the amount of space in the front. Um, but when compared to the Hyundai, they leave it a lot more um, like a traditional vehicle so you can get to uh, maintenance things easier um, so this is what I mean this is all you get for the front and for reference you know it's it's not much you could fit maybe the EV charger right um, but you can't fit anything massive like the Tesla like in the Tesla you could fit a roller bag right the, yeah this whole space is is front and it goes deeper than this right does it have a drain plug so you can use it like a cooler no no, that's only like the Maki. Yeah, <laughs> that's a nice feature. I wish I had that for when I go camping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is nice that uh, in the Model Three, 
there's a bunch of shrouds and stuff, right? That cover all the, the, Correct. the innards. It's, it's, it's right up here. Um, it's, it's a plate that comes up. Um, and then you can, that's how you'd be able to fill up your uh, wiper fluid and coolant and whatnot, but it's all covered. You, you'd have to look. Oh, so look even if up. you want to just add wiper fluid, you got to pull that cover off. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's on using like little plastic clips. It's, it's like, it, it takes no, oh, no okay. effort to pull it off. It's, it's, it's not bad. Gotcha. Um, and gotcha. I think, I think the wiper fluid might be, might have a cutout for it. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, 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 it's not terrible to pull that off. So how do you like this, this screen versus the Tesla? So, um, keep in mind, I have the Model 3, the Model S and Model X are a little bit different, but the Model 3, um, doesn't have any heads up view like this. It's just one giant screen in the center that controls everything. Um, there's no buttons like this. It's, uh, you know, heat, AC, everything is done on the screen, um, mm -hmm. in the Tesla. So, you know, going back to all these buttons, it is different. Um, it's something to get used to, but I'm sure anyone coming from a traditional ICE vehicle would have absolutely no problem um, getting into this and driving it. Whereas in the Tesla, they might have a little bit more, I wouldn't say trouble, but um, it would be t t take a little bit more getting used to. Yeah, there's a little bit of a learning curve. Like yeah. I've never been in a Model 3, so like adjusting the vents, you got to go in and like drag your finger around just to do that, right? Yeah, well, that's the thing. There are no vents. It's it's it's, that one it's like it's it's one um, line across the dash, and it's all just software controlled of how much um, heat or, or AC is pushed up and then pushed out, and however you adjust the vents on the screen is how it um, right. gets get projected to you. Right. Um, do you like having the uh, hard buttons for climate now? I know a lot of people that do. I personally don't. I, really? I've gotten so used to it being on the screen. I, I like it more on the screen, huh. um, but I could s totally see how people want physical buttons. So if you want to do adjust the climate in here, do you go into the touch screen and do it or do you do it down here? No, no, I, I, I do it on here. Okay. Um, but, and, and I guess that would lead into my next point is this has a lot, a lot of menus to be able to do all sorts of stuff. Um, but sometimes it's like you're going through menu upon menu upon menu to get to something. Whereas in the Tesla, I feel like the user interface is just built better. Um, the things that you need are just, you know, within two taps versus right. maybe four with this. Right. I can't speak to the Tesla because I've never been in one, but I mean, it looks like a pretty slick system. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And and that's that's the big difference that I'd say is between this and a Tesla. The software is just, you know, you could tell that, you know, a Hyundai has been or, or Hyundai has been doing, um, you know, uh, infotainment systems yeah yeah has been doing legacy style infotainment systems for a while whereas tesla is the new um kids to party and right. has been doing it based on you know what an, what your iphone looks like not what cars have been for the past 20 years right tesla's almost more of a software company at this point precisely yeah now with the tesla i know they push kind of redesigns of the home screen every once in a while does that mm -hmm. really throw you off when they push a new update and it like moves stuff around it throws some people off um for me um you know i'm a techie person so i grasp it pretty quickly mm -hmm. um but i definitely know some people especially with the latest update that wish they could go back or don't want to update their car <laughs> because they don't want the the new software right and um, you can't go back once you install it right correct the gotcha. only people that could move <clears throat> your software back is tesla service and Good luck uh, asking them to yeah, move, right. your, move your software back if you don't like the way the interface looks. Right, they're not going to want to do that. Right. Interesting. Right. Okay. Now, the Model 3, it's still, they're still shifting on a stock, right? They don't have the fancy swipe like in the Model S Plaid, does it? No, so there's a shifter on this side. Well, there's a, um, you know, to, to be able to uh, turn on your turn signal is on this side, like any regular vehicle, and then there's a... Um, shifter on this side you go down for drive up for reverse and in for park mm -hmm. so similar to this but not exactly right so i guess the big takeaway is if if you're looking for something that's kind of get in drive you know where everything is it's pretty intuitive this is the way to go but if you want something that's cutting edge top tech yeah um, this, the tesla's exactly t t tesla's more up that person's alley there. yeah gotcha all right, Will. Well, thanks for uh, spending some time with me in the car and giving me your, your opinion versus the Tesla. Absolutely. Thank you. Big thank you to Will for taking some time to talk about the differences between his Tesla Model 3 and his new Ionic 5. We got together because we were filming a video with Kyle Connor of Out of Spec Reviews comparing the SE, the SEL, and the limited trims of the Ionic 5. So be sure to subscribe to Kyle's channel, Out of Spec Reviews. I'll leave a link in the description. 
his video should be coming out sometime this week. And I just wanted to give another special thank you to all of my new subscribers. I'm about to hit a thousand, which was a milestone I never thought I would achieve. And a massive thank you to all of you. I wouldn't be here today without, without each and every single one of you. So thank you for subscribing and watching my videos. And for those of you who are first time viewers of the channel, if you have enjoyed watching, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.